when I was in high school, I didn't know much of dating and all that. Well, there was that dating, but not the extreme dating that happens nowadays with the kids of nowadays. So, by the time I reached uni, that's when I understood there was something more than just dating. And uh, on, uh, I met when I was in university. And I got my first child when I was so young. And um, as I told you last time, I used to smoke weed, drink alcohol and all that. So the moment I knew that I was pregnant, I didn't know much about the pills and all that. Although people had told me about it, I don't know the, is this, the not, yeah, it's all this protection, but you know, I don't know this, this people or something, which I took, but it backfired on me. And uh, so I was scared. This is my first time. I was kind of happy at the same time because uh, I love I love babies. Huh? So I took the precaution, but then the P2, but then it didn't, it didn't work. I did. I did. For him, he was shocked. And um, when I told my parents, they asked me to abort. But it seemed scary to me, I didn't want to die. So for the first 30 minutes, actually, I aborted in my mind, not physically. Yeah. I just, I, in my thoughts, I was so sure I'm going to abort. Because though um, it seemed so easy, the way people are saying it, like uh, you just need to buy a pill and then, I don't know, put it on your, I don't think on your, I don't know an ear and there you go you get your periods because I knew I was pregnant when I was one month one month pregnant I didn't I never ever ever like my my periods are regular so I knew I was pregnant in a month's time but um, I thank God it didn't happen so I remember uh, after I was pregnant I just smoked <laughs> weed I smoked my ass off I smoked as I drank I did all those stuff but I thank God I didn't abort so I ended up being a mother at a very young age. Well, he accepted. Yeah. He accepted and uh, until one day my cousin called, but at home they didn't know I was pregnant and then I was pretty sure if they knew they were going to kick me out or which it happened. So my cousin called the guy without even telling me. <laughs> then she was like, yes, my cousin. So she told him, if my dad knows about this, she's gonna be kicked out. So the guy panicked and he asked me to abort. And to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, I settled I'm not gonna abort. So I, I lost hope. I lost hope because now the guy is gone. I was pretty sure I was gonna be kicked out. And um, it's my first time I know nothing about babies and all that. And I'm not working, I'm still at school. Yeah. So what happened, I stayed in school. I was in the hostel the whole time. So for the first few months, I used to go home and go back to the hostel, they never knew. But when I was, by the time I was eight months pregnant, because I stayed, most of the time I used to stay in the hostel. So when I had to go back home, they knew I was pregnant when I was eight months old, apart from my cousin, and it was a shock, especially for my uncle. And uh, I was kicked out for real. So I was kicked out, and uh, I was given when, when I was being kicked out, they gave me money to go to the hospital. I was supposed to have a CS, not a normal delivery. So. I went to my cousin's place, we searched for a cheap hospital, that was St. Mary's, and I, I got my, I need to deliver safely. But now, that's uh, the beginning of, once you get a child without someone, when, once you get a child outside, trust me, it's so hard for you to like get a serious person in life. Because I ended up being in another relationship, got my second child and another child. My team didn't work. He got scared because he was told I was gonna be kicked out. 
So to me, I think he was running away from the responsibility. But I don't know why the first time, the first time he accepted. I don't know. I don't know. To me, I think he was scared. Because later, after I gave birth, uh, he could come see the child at my cousin's place. But he never did. He, he never supported it. No, he didn't. He didn't even come to the hospital. I was there alone with my cousin. And even one of my aunts came. Actually, two of them came. I'd given up, remember, before even I got to once the guy said I should just take it off, I had given up already. So I had so much rejection on this child. So I could shout at her, I could say all the negative stuff, because I don't know she's ruined my life. But it wasn't her actually, it was I who ruined my own life. So that's where the journey of being a single mother started. And uh, I ended up getting another guy and got other kids. And the same thing happened after a while now. Being a single mother of three, life being so hard. It's so hard for me actually, after today, it's so hard. But I don't think God can allow you to sleep hungry when you have kids. It because a point you have nothing at all in the house. But he never sleep hungry. I don't understand how. I've set in my mind like a... Okay, no, okay. I, I always claim never lucky every day. But the saddest part is when my daughter doesn't go to school because well, maybe I'm lucky in school. Fee. And no one... People don't take you seriously because they think maybe you have money. They look at you and they think you have money. They look at the kids and they think you have money. So even when you go... I uh, like talk to the principal and uh, anyone they think you're just joking yeah. so I'm a human being. Human beings with feelings, yeah? But I can never take any man seriously. Ever. Yeah. I'm not trying to use them because I don't ask them for money. I don't ask them for money. I don't ask them for anything, right? I just need that, uh, what do you call it? Like a company? Just a company, but I can never take him seriously. Yeah, I can never make the same mistake again. It's me and my children. We rely on God. Yeah. First of all, I wouldn't advise anyone going and having sex in the campus. Life is crazy. I was a good person. I was joining campus. I was still a virgin. I remember. But the moment you mingle with people there, you end up having bad friends, you end up drinking, smoking and all that. And people take advantage of you. How many men lie they love you and they don't love you in real life? Yeah, but some are, some, like a very few percentage, they mean what they say. I've heard of friends who got married to people who were working with, with men, sorry, whom we were studying with in the university and they're living a good life. But how many of such kind of men are there? There's a saying which says, once a man gets used to taking advantage of ladies, they take advantage of all. So men, they have that strategy, I'm sorry to say this. They have that strategy of lying to women and they'll come in the name of love. Yeah, to blind you, yes. And once they get what they want, they'll go away. First of all, uh, for a prostitute, I'm sorry to call them prostitutes, which where they are going searching money for men. Being a single mother is not easy. And trust me, you have had suicidal thoughts, not once, not twice, not twice. Because now, uh, these kids are looking, they know that <laughs> I'm there, yeah? They don't know how much I'm struggling, they need the They ask for kind of stuff they want, they want to live a good life. But then they compare themselves with other people, they're living good lives, and then they're like, why can't I get this? So for a prostitute, as I've told you, it seeks a point where you have no food at all in the house. And these are kids who are crying. But for me, thank God I've never lacked. I always run to church. I don't run to prostitution. Because I believe God provides. He provided. He's been providing the whole time for me and my children. But 
here we have people who are not strong in their faith. And they're here the children who need school fees, they need food, they need clothing. And even we ladies, the stuff that we need for ourselves. Yeah. So they'll end up going outside searching for people, searching for cheap money. Most of these women maybe they're not even educated or maybe uh, there are no jobs for them. So they end up going to the street searching for men. Okay, I'm not saying it's good, it's not good at all because um, it's not good at all to like use your body to get money. But at a point I understand them. At a point I see maybe someone doesn't want to doesn't want to see their kids sleep hungry and they have no one to help them they end up going to the street yeah but uh, actually let me funny thing is there's a time there's a time I was just at home and uh, my daughter was home for a while because I didn't have school fees and uh, in this kind of thought came I don't know if it's, it's like a demon which comes to your head or something yeah so this thought, I had this thought yeah so how about, I've had so many rich men coming, like, uh, but they know they're married men, coming asking me out and all that. And for me, I've never, I've never had that interest. So I was like, no, this is too much. I think I'm just going to go, do whatever it's done, and I get the money to take my daughter to school. So I was, um, I remember that day I was just arguing with myself, arguing with my mind. But then now there's this other part which tells me no. Once you start this prostitution thing, you can never stop. Because you want you want things which come so fast. You want someone to just live with you and give you money. Which doesn't last long, you get diseases, you end up dying when you're young. So yeah. And even I don't know. Actually my son does all the time. I tell them Jesus. <laughs> You should ask him who's your dad. We're not telling Jesus. Is. He knows the dad is somewhere, but then I always tell them Jesus is your dad. So whenever, the, yeah, they end up. So this this is same. He was asking for something, yeah, and I was like, um, Mom, I need to ask that Jesus to give me that. Yeah, they told him, yeah, just go pray. He's gonna give you. But thank God, the next day got some new money and bought a cheap version of what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he answered the prayer. He believes. He believes. Because them have been raising them in the Christian way since we converted us. So now he knows. He knows Jesus is the dad. He knows he provides. And even when I lack, I tell him. When I lack, I always tell him that. Even me, I'm asking Jesus to give me. Yes, please.